you will hear a lecture from a professor. Positive and negative reinforcement. We've all heard this term before, right? It's when our minds are triggered by something and then we're rewarded for it. A piece of cake, for example. And our brain says, calories, survival. So, we taste the food. It tastes good. So we eat the food and, especially with sugar, our bodies send a message to our brain to remember what we're eating and where we have found it. We lay down this content memory and learn to repeat the process for the next time. See food. Eat food. Feel good. Repeat. Trigger. Behavior. Reward. Simple, right? Eventually, our brain starts to realize that we can use this same reward mechanism when we're feeling bad. Something to help lift our mood. Same process, but just with a different trigger. So instead of this hunger signal coming from our stomach, this emotional signal, feeling sad, triggers that urge. So, we quickly learn that if we quickly eat sugar or something delicious, we feel better. Maybe in our teen years, we thought that smoking was cool. We saw ads, like those Marlboro ads, that showed us how smoking was cool. See cool, smoke to be cool, feel cool, repeat. Each time we do these sorts of things, we repeat the process and it becomes what we know as a habit. Later in life, as we feel stressed out, we've already developed this habit of reward by smoking a cigarette or eating something sweet or tasty. So, what's happened here in reality? We've actually gone from learning to survive to literally killing ourselves with these habits. Smoking and obesity are among the leading causes of death in the world. So, based on this reward-based learning process we use to create this habit, what if we learn to actually tap into this process? You can try to force yourself to quit smoking or try to go on a diet, but the majority of people will fail. What if, instead, we try to focus on our curiosity when we're actually in the process of following through without bad habits? Maybe we could get a new perspective on what this bad habit actually feels like. Hmm we would probably get a bad taste in our mouth after having had our cigarette. The prefrontal cortex of our brain understands on an intellectual level that we should change our habitual behavior, such as to help us to stop smoking or to help us to stop eating that second or third cookie. Using the prefrontal cortex is called cognitive control, but unfortunately... It's the first part of our brain that doesn't connect when we get stressed out. Yeah, we can all relate to this. We can't help ourselves to yell at others when we're stressed out. We need to actually see what we're getting from our bad behavior in order to get less interested in doing these bad habits in the first place. When we become disenchanted from these habits... It helps us to let go as well. Quitting these bad habits may not stop overnight, but they will after seeing the results of our actions over time and will let go of these old habits and form new ones. The secret to getting curious is actually stepping into our inner being. Instead of compulsively reacting to our urges, we can... 1. Notice the urge. 2. Get curious. 3. Feel the joy of letting go. And 4. Repeat. So, we can tap into our inherent capacity 
to be curiously aware right when that urge to smoke or stress eat or whatever arises.